Okay, I think we are live. Hello, everybody. We're here yet again <laughs> to talk about the next book in the Sword of Truth series, Soul of the Fire. Um, looks also, like just FYI, some, some children just got in the pool that's in my complex like a few minutes ago. So if you hear screaming Good. children, I don't have children other than my furry baby. But um, yeah, just so you know. Yeah, looks like we got some people here. Hi, Jessica. Hey, Michael. Yeah, a lot happening today, I guess. Hello, Beth. Finished two hours ago. Great timing. Hi, Megan. I finished yesterday, so. Yeah, I finished a while ago, so <laughs> I'm sure it'll it'll come back to me. It's fine. Hello. You made it. Hey, Angela. Hello. Hello. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we still are after this. <laughs> yeah. You know. Okay. So, Soul of the Fire. How did you do with this one? I mean... I, I mean, I never thought of it this way until, re I mean, we talked about this last time or the time before, I don't know, but that it seems like every other book is good. It's like he does good and then he just kind of like uh, does a bit of something to set something up in the next one. And then we have like a good one again. And then it's like, nah, 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 and then it's a good one again. <laughs> like, yeah, that's like the pattern. And so yeah. this is, you know, Temple of the Winds, I don't think is good, but it is, well, I mean, I have very mixed feelings about Temple of the Winds, but like it has like a clear mission and a clear like a thing it's trying to do. And that thing is bizarre, but like it's like it showed up with a with a purpose. Right. And like Faith of the Fallen, I'm very nervous to read because like it was, as I said many times now, my favorite the first time through. So I'm like anxious that it won't be this time and that I like won't have that memory of it being good anymore. But we'll see. Hopefully it still we'll is. And that would keep that would um that would keep the pattern. My, my, yeah, the pattern. Um <laughs> supports the uh idea that it's going to be good yeah this is definitely my least favorite of the ones we've read so far like easily i don't know how you felt about it but yeah well that's why it's hard to because i still you know i find it difficult to say how i feel about temple of the winds and we talked about obviously last time about that yeah um but based on what i just said you know it's kind of like I don't know if it's on the sort of truth lives that I've said this, but I know I've said this many times in general because I grew up with a mother who said this all the time. And that is love me or hate me, but don't ignore me. And like, I feel a lot of love for some of these books. I, I don't know if hate's the right word, but you know, I feel, I feel a lot of distinct feelings about Temple of the Winds yeah. and Soul of the Fire. I think there's a good reason, just like Blood of the Fold, that I was like, I don't remember that one. I mean, I know I read it because I know I read the ones before and after it. But I was like, when I read it, I was like, this is why I don't remember it. <laughs> mm, yeah, I think I, this one I like actively disliked more than the others. But I think it's because I really didn't like Fitch's whole thing. And it was like half the book, mm -hmm. more than half the book. <laughs> it does. It, this is kind of the first book um, that he does this more with. Well, I guess he does it a bit with Blood of the Fold. I guess maybe that's what the thing is. Mm, like when he, every time. Yeah, where are Kara? <laughs> yes. Where are the people we like? <laughs> but I mean, I was going to say, so like the, the books in this pattern, you know, of the good and the meh and the good and the meh and the good mm -hmm. and the meh. The meh ones seem to be doing a thing of like, let's spend some time with like either a villain or a new side character that you don't know and like spend an equal, if not more amount of time. Cause like blood of the fold, you know, we spent a lot of time with the blood of the fold um, instead of with like Richard and Kaylin and, and mm -hmm. them. And here too, you know, we spent a lot of time with them. Um, uh, I've already forgotten their names, but like the like new people. Fitch, I think Fitch yeah. is the only one I remember because I put his name in my review. But I mean, like the, the that all the people in that like city or country or, is it a country? Is it, that area like that kingdom? Yeah. So Pop, like that. I don't know. Whatever yeah, it is. That yeah. Region. All the people of that region. We spent a lot of time with their politics and their relationships and their like deal. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And I did not particularly like all of their stuff or the way it was handled, which I'm sure we'll get into. Well, I said before, the only thing that I did remember about this book was where it ends, because that's like, that's where Faith of the Fallen begins. So I was mm -hmm. like, I remember Faith of the Fallen very well. So I remember like the situation that we pick up at in the mm -hmm. beginning of Faith of the Fallen. So I was like, I remember that that happens at the end of Soul of the Fire. I don't remember why or how we got there. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is interesting. I love how we've got a lot of um a lot of comments about the chickens, which people seem to have mixed feelings about. Uh yeah, and Angela's chickens. Uh there are there's a possessed chicken. Okay, the thing about the chickens or chicken singular. <laughs> I thought it was funny, honestly. <laughs> the thing about it that I think is funny is not like it's like metatextually funny, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is um we've talked a lot about how the naming of things is not Terry Goodkind strong suit. That like the names for things in his world are either like uninventive or kind of silly. And so the fact that Zed and and Anne later are like, I can't believe they fell for something that we call the lurk. That's such a clearly absurd name. And I'm like, excuse me, are you Terry Goodkind telling us that this name, unlike all the others, is noticeably absurd and that our characters should have noticed it? I was like, <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir. It's <laughs> true. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I thought the chicken thing was funny, but I've noticed, I noticed a lot of reviews where people were like, I hated the chicken so much. And I was like, I mean, I. I thought it was kind of funny, but it's fine. I could guess it could be annoying. Um, okay. Do Shilu. Well, like she's saying, Do Shilu is the only woman to get entangled with Richard and live, <laughs> which is a good Accurate. point. <laughs> accurate breaking the pattern of if you are with richard and you are not kaylin then you end up dead <laughs> yeah i mean I, the funny thing is is i was like i was like this is so dumb because of the, there's the whole thing at the beginning right where they're like oh well you know one of the signs of the chimes is that it has to be like your third wife who dies which is all, not number signs one is, not signs one of the requirements, requirements. to have actually called okay them. okay okay okay. and okay. i remember thinking i was like this is one of i mean tara goodkind already has a lot of contrived things and i'm like <laughs> This is so exceedingly it's so contrived. Con it's so contrived. And also the fact that they're like, oh, well, clearly it can't be because it's only my second. I'm like, D do you not remember the woman who like said that you're not her husband? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, this is well, especially of because like in, in not, I shouldn't say most books, but in a lot of books, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's 500 pages, um, but in those 500 pages, you know, a couple of years pass, or then like mm -hmm. the next book is a couple of years later and like more time has passed. You're you're like, okay, I remember what happened 400 pages ago, but for you, it's been a few years. So like the character may not remember. But I mean, what's funny about these books is the next book always picks up like the, within 24 hours of where the last book ended. So yeah. I'm like, okay, timeline wise, it's literally been like, she hasn't had the baby yet and she's pregnant when he meets her. So it's been less than nine months <laughs> since that happened. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah. For being the seeker, he can be clear. Yes. Oh, yeah. This was funny, Jessica. The breath of life is just CPR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's so horrified. Like, why would you do this horrible thing? In fairness to Richard, like having the instinct that if it's a thing more Sith do, it's probably bad is a good instinct. <laughs> yeah. Accurate. Yep. I just, it's, it's funny. Yeah, I guess that's the thing. Like, I, like, I liked okay. Like, I liked find the parts where we were actually with Richard and Kaylin and all them in this book. Like, they were fine. Also, you know how we're always, well, I'm, I'm more the one that complains about this, mm -hmm. about how Richard never looks like Richard on these covers. Well, they're teeny tiny, so you can't really see them. However, the maiden standing beside this dude in a white dress has, like, platinum blonde hair. Um, which is not Kaylin, but only a... Kaylin wears a white dress. Exactly. So it's I'm like, bad artistry. Who is this? <laughs> like this could almost maybe be yeah. Richard. Hard to say. Well, we can definitely say that's not Kaylin. Yeah. And Kara would never wear a white dress, and Kara has blonde hair, but it's not Kara. I don't know. So. I don't know. It's nonsense. Yes, Angela. This is Terry Goodkind, not Terry Pratchett. Definitely. <laughs> they could not be more different. These Terrys. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, no, the, the cover art is not, not accurate. Well, that being said, though, this is one of my favorite covers in the series, just in terms of, like, it's a very it's nice, pretty. like, I would like a wall calendar with this being one of the months, you know, like, it's, yes. it's a nice looking mm -hmm. setting. I agree. I don't know what it has to do with Soul of the Fire, because I don't even recognize this as a scene from Soul of the Fire. 
is it is well is is it like towards the end doesn't he go to like a lake or something where he kills the deer or in the beginning when he goes to the hot springs for a bath oh yeah but still like like you know in stone of tears the cover i'm like oh this is the part where he's walking with pasha and there's gratch like i know what part this is but people are saying it's the ovens yeah that's the part that's the hot springs which means that has to be Kaylin, except it's not. Except it's not, because Kaylin doesn't lady. have blonde hair. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, so, you know, I one thing that I said in my review of this one is, like, I've seen a lot of people complain about this series and be like, you know, it's feel it, that it's, like, misogynistic or that, like, sexual assault isn't handled well or women aren't handled well and like normally I'm kind of like "Ah, I mean like I feel like it's kind of equal opportunity I don't have that many issues this book I did feel that way I felt like like as we spent so much time in that place with Fitch and all them and it was just so awful to women and only women and it was not fun it did feel (laughs) I mean that it was was we were intended to feel that it was what that it was really you know like yeah like, it wasn't written where, like, it's fine. Well, like, no. we, it was meant to be written as, like, this is a deeply flawed society, and one of the many ways the flaws are manifest is in the inequality of the sexes. Yes. But I didn't, I don't know, I didn't like the way he ended it either, of, like, oh, let's just give, like, everybody STDs and, like, all the victims are gonna die. I'm like, this is not sensitively handled sexual assault at all um and it felt more one-sided like i think in other books like at least it's been like men and women are kind of equal opportunity and that was definitely not the case so i just i like i did not enjoy reading that part to of me book. like i mean i don't know like this that's the it didn't matter to me that it's not equal opportunity because it felt to me like he was purposely writing a society that is horribly misogynistic. So it's not equal opportunity. Like that's, that is what he's the point he's trying to make, whether he's making that point well or not, it's a different question. But I was like, he's trying to be like, look how sexist and yeah. awful this is towards women. Right. And honestly reading this book in a post BLM post me Too world where like, we're talking about underclass like citizens who are mistreated by the system. This is not like, women yeah. you know like there's like a there's a an subset you know thing too yeah yeah mm-hmm. um and how they're basically like taught that they're evil at birth um and then having women you know be basically like the way they're treated by the system and that if you're alone with a man in power that it's assumed that you're going to be assaulted basically and that you should be okay with it <laughs> i was just like post blm post me too i was like it almost feels like he's reacting to those things, even though this was written well before. And he, I think was dead even before those things happened or died during them. But yeah, I mean, I can see that. Like it is definitely like it, because it's like clearly this victim blaming sort of thing. I, I guess the main thing I didn't love is that, that it's also sort of like, (laughs) like very negative about women who want to be more sexual as well i don't know i just i guess i I didn't read it as like it being negative about women who want to be sexual it was written as like women who are you know um like there are women that you know do get um assaulted obviously by men in power but there are also women that purposely use their wiles to social climb yeah so like that's more when I saw it being commented on uh, where it's like both of you like if you're assaulting a woman because you're in power or if you're a woman who's trying to climb through her wiles both y'all are bad is like I think his point yeah I don't know that it was like made in the way that I deeply flawed but I think that's what he's trying to get at (laughs) yeah you're probably right I think this is just like the first one where I'm like I am not like I'm just kind of like sick of the reliance on um, sexual violence being a lot like, I, I didn't really, like, have any problems with, like, how he's choosing to comment on a deeply flawed society. And those are, like, fa- flaws that he's calling out. I'm, like, having a dude say, hey, women are being mistreated by this society where men are in charge. I'm, like, yeah. As <laughs> usual, I'm, like, generally speaking, I agree with your point. Yeah. But, like, I'm just getting a little sick of, like, you know how we know this person's evil? They're a rapist. They're a rapist. <laughs> oh, and so there's surprised. just so much of it. Yeah. 
they all had magical syphilis. Yeah, that was kind of, it, it was a little ridiculous, it's true. Like, that's a way to just kill off everybody who was sleeping around, but yeah. That's one way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I, I yeah, I just, I, I think it stood out to me more probably too, because other than otherwise, like, I just wasn't really having a fun time with this. I was like, I just don't really care. I do remember <laughs> the first time I read it. Um even though I know because this series is the house because of how that it is that I'm never actually concerned for the main characters, you know, like I know they're going to be fine, yeah. but I do remember feeling like nevertheless, like kind of stressed about like the end and Kaylin being attacked and Richard not knowing and like, walking away and maybe yeah. like, no, 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 don't walk away. It's her. And then he's like, maybe I should help them. Like, yeah, you should go back, go back. So like this time I knew all that was going to happen. It's like, oh yeah, this is how we end up with her where she is at the beginning of Faith of the Fallen. Fifth. now I remember how we got here so like I wasn't stressed because like yeah hey, he's gonna come back and yeah yeah there was just a lot of stuff well and then like the whole thing too of like she has a miscarriage and I was like oh my god like it's just there's so many because you know again we have to like will she won't she like have an abortion basically with the stuff and then she's like no I won't then she loses the baby anyway <laughs> like oh my god it's rough. it's rough it's, it's rough it's a lot this book a lot. it's a lot oh geez but it's interesting how often in the series conversations about abortion have occurred already this is the true. second time it's the second time yeah yeah that's true and the fact that in this book where kaylin is in face of that situation the other character is there do shilu comes back like she's not she wasn't in it for mm -hmm. the last couple of books but she comes back so that she can be like uh i don't know you know, we're, so we can have that conversation with both ladies, basically. Right. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I appreciate that it's not like vilified. Like it's given as like a like a reasonable option, I guess. If yeah, and like the person that sells the the stuff to Kaylin is not portrayed as a villain. Is no. not portrayed as someone who is even trying to talk Kaylin out of it. They're just like, oh, I'm sorry that like you know that it's this is something you have to go through. But like, here's the stuff, and like mm -hmm. you'll be you'll be okay, and you know maybe someday you'll actually like purposely get pregnant you know yeah yeah so i mean i feel like that part was handled all right but hakens used to be superior in our the yes <laughs> amanda they didn't need half the book to explain that i agreed yes jessica i think this is exactly it like i think there's a lot of bad stuff that happens in the other books but it's like balanced out with things that are good or more fun or entertaining on some level you know whereas this it was just i was like this is a well lot. this book is also a lot shorter that's true but also you know it's weird hmm. i mean i'm keep i'm trying to diagnose why we have this like every other book pattern and like it seems like the the meh books are also weirdly like reduced in stakes and scale mm. you know like we'll we'll deal with jagang which is like a world stakes thing right and then that's on pause and we deal with like i mean this is arguably the world because the chimes are affecting the world but it definitely feels more like it's isolated to this town and like right. this Repul like even though i know the chimes affect everywhere it doesn't it feels much smaller mm -hmm. because like in the previous books you know we see like we didn't go to the palace of the prophets really at all mm -mm. we don't know what Vern is up to or warren or nathan um we like hardly see Jagang at all mm -hmm. so this one just it feels like um you know like it like tv shows you know when they have just like uh we have the main villain like climax for like the actual season finale but the mid-season we have like a smaller hurdle right which is like this right so it feels like every other book is the mid-season and then the, the book that follows is the season finale yes yeah i guess that's that's kind of true it's interesting. Well, also the chimes. I was like, I I just <laughs> I was like, this feels very not well explained. <laughs> A lot of his magic is contrived, and like it's yeah. the it's that way because the plot needs it to be for this particular mm -hmm. plot he has in mind. But this is one of the most egregious examples of it has to be your third wife, and there's this like one place with the one thing, and you're just yeah. like. Hmm. Okay. Well, and also I'm like, what are they? Like, well, but also it's, just like, that, it's like, like they just like vaguely sort of kill people but can inhabit things. I don't know. It was well, just it also very like, like retrospectively, retroactively, you're like, I'm I'm 
you know, when you, when Nathan's like to save Richard's life, here's the magic thing you have to do. And you're like, great, mm-hmm. I'm doing the magic thing. But like yeah. in retrospect, why the F would the chimes help with bringing Richard away from the brink of death? You know what I mean? Like, cause I know that's why they were called and she mm-hmm. was his third wife and therefore happenstance, this actually resulted in them being called. But like, I don't understand why they were needed to help Richard because like, I don't know why saying it would help because the only thing that saying it would do is call them and you were hoping not to call them. But if you did call them, how did they help Richard? Like, I just, I just. It feels like it's a negative side effect is like how, what I took away, but I don't, honestly, I don't know. Okay. They're saying it's important, but later on you find out why. Okay. I guess we'll see. He has lost faith in humanity. Right. That's why I said like these yeah. other, every other book, it feels like the setup book for the, like the good one that comes after like blood mm-hmm. of the fold okay i'm don't saying temple women's is a good one but again it had a clear mission statement it had a like a like plot. you knew what it was it was yeah, yeah like it was was doing something whereas yeah. this i'm like what are we doing Where, and again blood of the fold <laughs> felt like it was setting stuff up for temple of the winds and yeah. soul of the fire feels like it's setting stuff up for faith mm-hmm. of the fallen yeah yes yes I agree. Yeah, hearing about people who used to be used to being in power being reduced to slaves feels like a weird. Par- yeah, yeah, that's I can. I mean, I can see that. Well, not to mention, the I mean, there are multiple like, ways to read it. There are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do think you can read it in in a variety of ways, but there is something about this sort of I don't know there because because she's she's not wrong like there there are these fears of some of the like white supremacist people or whatever of like oh you just want like all of our children to believe that they're bad you know what I mean because they're white and like that's definitely like that from that perspective I can I can see I can see the argument because it is it is the kind of thing where it's like they're being taught from birth that they're just bad. Yeah, I mean, but, like, I, I get that reading of it. I just very much don't feel like that was what he was trying to Probably do. Probably not. No. Like, I but think I, he is commenting on, like, institutionalized, like, oppression and, and like, racism. the mm-hmm. fact that they actually secretly used to be in charge. I think he just wrote it in as, like, a twist that, like, you know... You've been told lies all your life that you mm-hmm. were actually on top before, and you're right. like, right, <sighs> right, yeah. No, I agree. I'm just saying I can see like how it would hit that way, but yeah, like, no, I think Lee it was like the most like easy way because like you obviously you can mm-hmm. tell people that like no, you shouldn't believe that um, you, just because you're told when you're a kid, you know, that your your kind is worthless or dumb or evil, you shouldn't necessarily believe that. And so, like, the easiest way for him to, like, prove it mm-hmm. would to be, be like, well, actually, historically, you used to be in charge. As opposed to, like, just innately, no one is born evil. Because then you're like, how can you prove that? Like, we all are told we're evil and we believe it. There's no, like, proof that you can be like, haha, see? You've been told a lie. So the easiest yeah. way for him to be like, see, haha, you were told a lie is because like before in the before times, you were in charge. Yeah. Okay, so I have a question. Are we supposed to be rooting for Fitch? Okay, good. Because I don't like him. Like, he is kind of awful and like just I I really did not like him, and I was like, no, I, I read, supposed, but like, are, but I'm like, are, is he supposed to be having a redemption arc or something? Because I'm like, I'm not buying it. Like, this is inadequate for me. No, I mean, because I feel like he often gives us POVs on characters, like you know, the sisters, of the dark, and things like that, where mm-hmm. it's just supposed to kind of show us, instead of entirely othering the villain, it's supposed to show us how you get to the point where you think these things, how you mm-hmm. get to like, what's the. The calculus of the other side what makes them think this is right or good or justified so i think that's what he was yeah jessica i'm with you fitch is trash because like well terry goodkind is like in no way even approaching the league of joe abercrombie mm-hmm. like he does often do that right where he's writing a character that you're not meant to sympathize with but he doesn't write them necessarily as a caricature of a villain like you he shows you what's or he's trying to show you what's in their mind and how a person is never the villain of their own story and how right. in their mind, like 
like he thinks he's doing right that he should get the sort of truth and that he's helping people and like he in his own mind is not mm -hmm. mustache twirling villain so it's like showing this is how people can arrive at these yeah. thoughts and these behaviors and how he gets like co like because he feels I don't know. He he um he feels like one of those uh what's the word for him? I can't think of it now. The the guy the dudes who like think incel. The, incel. He's like an incel. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> yes. But yeah, that's totally how he reads cuz you know, it's like all of this is like he's upset that the girl he liked was being raped. And he feels like, I don't know, personally hurt, but harmed by that, but not upset for her. And so he hurts her. I don't know. I just, I was like, this is, this is a lot. Like, I don't want to be in your head. <laughs> yeah. But again, like, I think, yeah. Again, he is no Joe Abercrombie, but it's the same sort of thing of like showing in, oh, inside the mind of, um, of somebody who like you're not meant to necessarily agree with or or see eye to eye with but to be like yeah this is a look inside the mind of right. someone like that yeah uh, yeah i just did we have to have it be like half the book though <laughs> but yes the og and i agree jessica um but i think we are meant to like um that be be beta that's her name he, is, she, is she the girl who died? Did she die? I don't know. I don't. But remember. she was the one that joined the army, and like when Richard and Kaylin show up, she's like, she greets them and oh, explains. Also, can we talk about remember. the like doomsday device? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's a weird weird iteration of a doomsday device. You haven't read it for sure. <laughs> Jessica, you're not, you're so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is like a totally 100%. Fish is totally the nice guy who'd be on Reddit. Yes. Yes. This is 100% him. Oh my gosh. Okay. Doesn't die. SP with, okay. I can't, honestly, guys, it, this, this is how little of an impression the details left on me. Cause I read it a couple weeks ago and I'm like, oh, I don't not remember. Beata. Okay. Yeah, that sounds Just right. Beata. I knew what I said. It didn't sound right, but I was okay. close. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were... Oh, no, I was just mentioning the Doomsday device being kind of silly. Yeah. I just felt like a lot of this was either silly or gross, and I just was like, can we be done now? I mean, it did feel like this, I don't know, treading in place filler book which yeah. is kind of how i feel about blood of the fold like yeah. it's it's treading in place except for the few key things which are the setup for the next book like we need kaylin to be like at death's door and richard to be down in the dumps that's really all that we like in order i mean, I mean for faith mm -hmm. of the fallen to happen those are the main things that need to be in place right yeah because he's also just like super upset that she was pregnant well also that's the thing of like he was like no i don't like she, like can people not just communicate where she's like well what do you think if we did have a baby as she's pregnant and he's like no no we can't do that but i mean she on she did it on purpose because she was like i want to gauge his feelings like yeah. you know tabula rasa like what does he actually think of this not mm -hmm. biased based on knowing that i already am pregnant yeah i guess i just feel like the reality is is that like even in real life, people do that. And I just don't think it's a good idea because people might have a different reaction once it's real. Like theoretical children is a very different thing from actual children, you know? Yeah. I mean, in fairness, most people don't have a sorceress that says they're going to come murder their child if they have one. So accurate. It's, I think it's fair for Kayla to be like, I need an unemotional assessment of whether this is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. That is true. That is true. Uh, I don't remember this. <laughs> the horse? Spider. Spider is oh. its horse. Okay. Yeah. 
I think I mostly just was like, I, I am mean, not like. I'm always here for Zed doing espionage, which is where the book does in the beginning when he's the first to show up and go into mm. the library and like, you know, sweet talk his way into getting some records. Like I'm always here for yeah. Zed missions. <laughs> I did enjoy those. Yes. Those were some good scenes. Yeah. And I I just was- felt like honestly, okay, so like, you know, I sorry I cut you off, but like the you're you know, you were saying all the sexual violence really bothered you. And like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I was just kind of like, ugh, like I'm just kind of desensitized to it. And I'm like, eh, we're doing more of this. Like, I get your point. Generally, mm. I agree. Can we, can we move on? Yeah. But like the part that did actually bother me was how out of, out of nowhere, Kaylin has suddenly developed a jealous streak when it comes to Jushailu. I yeah. was like, this doesn't seem like Kaylin. I don't like this. Well, it's weird too, because it's like, there's, they're not actually like they don't have a, that kind of relationship at all yeah it's weird i don't well maybe she's just jealous because she's having a baby that's what it felt like to me a little bit that like maybe she... no because she's all angry she's like oh you have a wife that you conveniently forgot to tell me about yeah. mm-hmm. okay i'm that's just like true are you serious? Like, when Richard is, like, so puppy dog love honest with you all the time. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I do think it's funny that he forgot. But, like, the very fact that he forgot should tell you how little this <laughs> meant to him. <laughs> I mean, accurate. Yes. Well, and she was, she was, has not, hasn't been jealous about stuff in the past. Maybe it's because she was pregnant and she didn't know. Maybe it was, like, the pregnancy hormones making her feel irrational but they had just had sex like the day before that's true I like don't I, I don't i'm not an expert on pregnancy but i don't think the hormones kick in you're correct within 24 hours <laughs> but in this world with the mother confessor they could you know <laughs> uh yeah yeah i mean i did think that was that was interesting and he had such a hard time with that he was like why why would they vote against me well, i'm like dude pr campaigns <laughs> and you definitely begin to see in this one so like in terms of what it's setting up for faith of the fallen obviously again kaylin being death's door mm-hmm. richard being dis- disillusioned with humanity like those are the big things but also right. we've begun a conversation about government handouts generating laziness yeah which is a big theme in faith of the fallen <laughs> Yeah, well, and, like, whether, like, with democracy, like, whether you can actually trust people to vote. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, honestly. Because the plot needed it. Because the plot needed it. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Yes. Agree. Zed sweet talking. I Means most of I Zed mean, things. Zed, is, Zed and Nathan. Oh, I love them. They're they which again, are... like maybe honestly, that might be part of why I don't like this or Blood of the Fool because you don't really actually you They're do not... see Nathan in Blood of the Fool. Yeah, Fold, but you don't. But see this Nathan one, you at don't see Nathan, this. and you don't get a lot of Zed. And bit. I think I've said this before, but I do tend to prefer the books <sighs> where Richard and Kaylin are apart. Hmm. And Faith of the Fallen, they are apart. Stone of Tears, they are apart. Mm -hmm. That's true. Those are my two faves. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Kaylin was body snatched, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. She was jealous of Nadine. But she was directed at Nadine, not at Richard ever. Like, she never worried about Richard being into Nadine. Mm -hmm. She just hated Nadine for being such a... Such a hussy. But she never was like, oh, Richard's probably into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of the older characters are great. Verna and Warren. Mm-hmm. I love Verna Where and Warren. Where are they at? Where are they? Like, we're spending all this time with, like, Fitch, who's the worst, and not getting any of the characters I like. I'm like, come on. So I really Terry. enjoy, again, in Faith of the Fallen, <laughs> or at least I remember enjoying it. We'll see if I still do. Again, that Richard and Kaylin are apart. I think mm-hmm. they're... You know, it's it's like one of those things about, you know, romance is that <laughs> you don't actually want to see them just together and fine. Like, that, what is that's well, not interesting. Well, okay, you don't want to <laughs> see them just... I mean, seeing a bit of it is nice, but, like, when it's just, like, ongoing, then you're like, I don't, you know, 
Like there's nothing to that. Whereas if there's something that's like driven you apart, then the fact that you're ex like thinking about loving them, it makes sense to me. Cause I'm like, you're missing them and they're gone and you want them. But if they're just like next to you all the time and you're still just like thinking about them all the time, I'm like, okay, like, it's really funny. Nice. I mean, I don't mind that. Like, I, I and like yes, both. That's the second but, thing I was uh, going to say is Nikki. Funny. I like having – seeing a lot more of Nikki. Yeah, Faith Nikki is an interesting character. Also, okay, this is weird that this is what sticks out to me considering my own diet, which was not the case when I read these books. Mm -hmm. But I distinctly remember the, like, um, pickled fat or whatever – that the other builder keeps giving Richard as like, cause he's like, he has to live on like the meagerest rations uh -huh. as a worker. And there's the like buddy he make he makes friends with like some other worker who keeps giving him this basically like pickled fat as a snack. And that's just like, I, what I think of Faith of the Fallen, it's one of the main like five bullet points that I think of as being in that book. Cause I don't know. It's just stayed with me. That's so funny. I got, yeah, I have no memory of that. So we'll but see. But when you get to it now, you'll be like, that's that's the thing. I don't, I, I don't know yeah. why Lena remembers this, but <laughs> there I don't. it is. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be interesting when we get to something we've actually never read before. Because, like, I think I got to Pillars of Creation. I don't think I read past that. I so. read pa uh, uh, through Naked Empire, which is the one okay. after Pillars of Creation. Maybe I did that. I don't know. I Naked don't know. Empire is the one where Richard decides to no longer be a vegetarian. <laughs> I don't think I would have noticed that. No, it's like a big plot point yeah. that he does that. <laughs> Which is, again, where I I uh, speculated that it's possible that Terry Goodkind was vegetarian all those years uh -huh. and then personally decided not to be. And so Richard also would decide not to be. I mean, if Richard is a stand-in for, for Terry Goodkind, which is very possible. Oh, that's funny. Uh, you want your... Your other bullet points, if um, you have them. I mean, like, it's... I just generally remember how um, anti-communist it was. Mm. I remember, obviously, like, the thing that's on the cover, the building of the statues. And mm -hmm. then part of... you know, I guess it's, like, not a, its own bullet point. It's, like, bullet A after... <gasps> within encapsulated in the building of the statues, bullet point is the <laughs> fat that he's getting as a snack from his buddy. <laughs> um, I remember a kid that he, like basically like teaches the ways of libertarianism too <laughs> it's like isn't it good to take pride in your work um i remember the horse i think it's a horse that richard whittles for kaylin and it's like a miniature version of what he later does with the statues where it's oh. like it's a physical thing to show her like how to like pull yourself up by your bootstraps basically is like a magical whittled horse <laughs> that like she's it's like next to her bed while she's recovering because she like refuses to like actually basically do physical therapy she's like no it doesn't matter i can never and he's like here's a magical whittled horse that will inspire you <laughs> um and i remember nikki obviously showing up to take him away i don't remember why she takes him away or why she's able to take him away mm -hmm. like why he agrees to it but i mean she shows up takes him away and like that's why they're apart for the whole book interesting uh, yeah i have like vague memories of like the carved horse and I don't know, like, I remember, like, something with them having a child where things get more serious about the possibility of, like, having, like, a... Wait, who? A male child. Richard and Kaylin. Not for Faith of the Fallen. No, but at some point. Doesn't that Not happen? Faith of the Fallen. <clears throat> I don't know if it's in Faith of the Fallen. I'm just, like, trying to think, like, what I remember of anything after Well, Pillars that. of Creation is about Jensen. Yeah, I don't know. It has been so long. I just don't think I remember very much, so. I remember Jensen. It sounds, like, familiar. I feel like maybe some of it will come back to me when I'm reading it, but I don't know. It's, I, yeah. Like, after the first few books, I just, I'm like, I don't. I don't remember very much, so he must leave because it will save Kaylin somehow, right? Okay. All right, we will get there. I do remember liking Nikki, though. I think she's an interesting character, so. Redemption arc. Mm hmm Yeah. But yeah, no, this was definitely, I gave this one like two and a half stars. <laughs> I didn't like it very much. <laughs> Maybe two. Yeah, it's, 
I mean, I think you like have a more visceral reaction to. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, eh. Like I, I, I know why I forgot about it, and I'm very ripe for forgetting about it again. Yeah. <laughs> and Did give me a couple it? years, and I will have. All okay, I gave it. Time. I gave it. I gave it two stars. I did two, but it was like a, it was like a sighing too, whereas yours is more of a fist clench too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good way to put it. I'm like, I actively disliked a lot of it too. <laughs> you just were like, eh, who cares? Yeah. Dumble of the Winds is the one that gets my fist clenched. That's so funny. Whereas, like, I actually like Temple of the Winds pretty well. So Temple, that's what I think I did give Temple of the Winds three stars. I think because I was like, I mean, it, it showed up. It had a thing it wanted to do, and it sure as heck did that thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, respect you did entertain me. It's again the love me or hate me, but don't ignore me. Soul of the Fire. It's mm -hmm. like in one ear and out the other. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what the point of any of that was, but I'm glad I'm done with it. Yeah. <laughs> Like he always has yeah. like MacGuffiny MacGuffins and plot devicey mm -hmm. devices, and it's always a bit contrived. But like Soul of the Fire is, is one of the really most contrived. contrived. It's so contrived, and like there's not enough fun stuff to make up for it, or not even necessarily fun. Because like I wouldn't necessarily say it's fun when we're with like Verna and Warren and they have serious conversations. There's just like not enough of the good stuff that's like. Um, an ongoing thing in this series yeah. that we're like, what's up with those characters? Mm -hmm. Like, you're showing me a bunch of stuff that I definitely because, like, if you are introducing new characters that are gonna, because we slowly added to the cast, you know, like with Stone of Tears is when we introduced all these like sisters that started to become mainstays, and Nikki is like slowly gonna become, you know, a mainstay, and like the more and Sith have been like incorporated into the main cast. So, like, if Soul of the Fire was giving us like a new like area new thread to new characters to like be like folding into the core group that would be different but it spends mm -hmm. so much time on these characters that are kind of awful and then not any time on the characters that we like that it's kind of yes. like what was the point of that? this is exactly it half of the pitch content should have been replaced with zed flirting and investigating yes or checking yes. in with verna and warren or, Nathan. or yes or those things yep i agree that would have i would have liked it a lot better yeah, no. I don't know. Did you watch um, the Wheel of Time show? I haven't. Well, you've probably heard about the episode that is like an entire wasted episode because it basically, I mean, it's a completely different plot line. It's nothing like this in that sense. But like there's a character that's not in the books even that gets introduced and developed and killed within that episode where you're like, why? We only have like, what, eight episodes for this whole show? So you spent an entire episode making like introducing us to and making us care about and developing this character only to kill them and what? then have a long funeral for them and this whole i was like you have limited runtime why is this happening and so like i it's a little bit how i feel about soul of the fire we're just like introducing a thing only to then kill it by the end of the mm -hmm. book and just be like i don't can, can i skip it <laughs> do we need that <laughs> do we really need this book yeah 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 yeah, I mean, there's the whole thing of like ever like losing magic, which and yeah, even Anne like, getting kidnapped was kind of pointless. Like it didn't achieve anything, didn't move anything mm -hmm. forward, didn't set up anything. Mm -hmm. it, this book really was treading in place. <laughs> yeah, not one of the better ones in the series, but it does have a nice cover. It does. It's like they were they were trying to make up make people want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and and Kara either stole Kaylin's dress or Kaylin is wearing a wig. Or or do Chilo stole I'm pretty sure Do Chilo is not blonde. She's probably not blonde, yeah. I don't know, something about that character gives me not blonde vibes. <laughs> can't put my finger on it, but <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I can't remember how she was described though when we actually like... As a noble savage. How could you forget? <laughs> Well, I know that, but, like, you know, people also do, like, Vikings that are kind of like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm pretty sure they're described as, like, a deserty people that have, um, I mean, you not probably, Vikings. That is probably accurate. I just don't remember. Yeah. See, I never liked the, I think I talked about it before. 
mm. that I put off reading Faith of the Fallen. And I mean, now that I've reread Soul of the Fire, I was like, I kept saying it was because Faith of the Fallen didn't interest me, which is mm-hmm. a big part of it. But it's also, I think that after reading Soul of the Fire, I was just kind of like, uh, I mean, I'll probably read some more Sword of Truth when I feel like I'm like, uh. and then mm-hmm. Faith of the Fallen, where it ended and what I knew we'd have to deal with is like Kaylin being all battered and we have to fix that and mm-hmm. Richard being depressed. And then the cover just has some statues on it and it's going to be all about Nikki. I was just like, I'll get to it when I get to it. And then I finally read it and I was like, this is my favorite one. <laughs> we'll see if it can live up to your memory. Yes. No, I, I like, I know she is native, but like what that means in this world. Who knows? But yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I hope I still <laughs> like it. <laughs> I, hope so. I think I I think I like it better than Soul of the Fire at the very least. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that would be easy to do. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, I think also Naked Empire <laughs> is one where Richard and Kayla are together for most of it, which is probably mm-hmm. another reason why I stopped there because I was like, okay, I'm getting sick of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. We'll see how it goes. I mean, like, we're definitely going to go farther with these than I've ever gone. So, yes. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot happening behind the scenes on that. (laughs) So. You know, Jessica, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> That's why I said something about her gives me not blonde vibes. <laughs> I mean, it's true. He is not much of an out of the box thinker. He probably thinks he is or thought he was, though. Well, he's out of the box on certain things like the entire finale of Temple of the Winds. That was quite out of the box. <laughs> true. But on Very like world true. building, not so much. Yeah. Culture true. building, mm-hmm. not so much. Mm hmm. Uh, we are going to, well, I, like, I had assumed, like, my plan had been that we'd, like, at least get through the end of that trilogy that comes after this. That comes after what? This series. Because there's this series, then there's a trilogy that's, like, Confessor, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, those, yeah. chain those Chain Fire, Confessor, and Phantom. Yes. So I think that's, as far as I know, the plan is to get through those this year. And then we'll see. <laughs> then there's the Nikki Chronicles, if we are so inclined. Yeah. And then there's other ones. There's like the Richard and Kaylin. I've heard terrible I've things heard about I've heard terrible that. things about those, which I don't think I really want to read, honestly. So. But Nikki. Nikki could happen. We'll see. Yes. So that's our plan, is to read the cha- through the Chainfire trilogy. And then maybe the Nikki to Chronicles. We'll see. we'll see how we're feeling. We'll see how we're feeling. I do have the Dead of Bones. It came in, like, a, like the the eBay. When I know it's, a like, uh, in the chronology of the series. You know, it's a prequel. <laughs> like, I know in the timeline mm-hmm. where it takes place. But when did he write it? When in that's publication a order? good question let's find out because I, I mean we could read it because i do have it came in like the i bought like a you know, we a, can read it because you have it i like this logic <laughs> well it's i on don't my, have it's, it. it's on my tv <laughs> i'm sure you could get it uh it was published oh it was published in 1998 so i guess it would have been uh so he published it. It came out the same year as Temple of the Winds. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But also, I mean, like, publication won't tell you when he was writing it. Like, when he was conceiving of the story of it. Right. Yeah, so it came It came out the same year as Temple of the Winds. So that's interesting. You go read all of it. <laughs> Nikki Chronicle spoiled... That's okay. I'm not honestly probably planning on reading. I mean, like, I think also, I mean, like, in my life, like, I, you know, vaguely kind of want to read it all. 
but like in terms of like back to back for this read a long a thon of whatever it's called that's a lot yeah okay dead of bones is good yeah i mean i'd be up for reading dead of bones which actually i mean we could do because i think the um that trilogy will take us through november um yeah, I mean, so we could, like, slot well, it in. Let's do it. In June, we're going to read uh, Faith of the Fallen. July is Pillars of Cre- uh, Pillars of Creation. Mm-hmm. August is Naked Empire. Um, September is the first Confessor book. Mm-hmm. October is the next Confessor book. November is the third. Yeah. That works yeah. Out. So then you think Dead of Bones for December? Either December or if we or if people think we should like slot it in earlier, we could do that, I guess. Uh, it's a novella, so it's short. So also if there's like a month where we're like, let's have a shorter book to read. Which I mean, December would be that month because of yeah, holidays. That's true, actually. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> Finish with the prequel. <laughs> I mean, if it's pretty I mean, if Jessica gave it four stars, like that seems like a high note to end. I remember the liking the cover. Yeah. I don't have it, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go, y'all. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll end. We've decided live that that's what we're doing. We've decided live. That's what we're doing. We will end with Dead of Bones in December. And yeah, it looks pretty short, under 200. So that'll be, that's a good December. Which also, I mean, the map books in our pattern tend to be shorter. Mm. Like Soul of the Fire and Blood of the Fold, I think, are both shorter than Stone of Tears, Temple of the Winds, and Faith of the Fallen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But everybody seems to really love this novella. Well, so. I'm not suggesting the length oh, will yeah. make it meh, but I mean, yeah. I was when you brought up length, it made me mm-hmm. think of another way this pattern That's is true. going. Yeah, <laughs> it's like he put less less effort into it or something. Like they feel like books where he's just kind of like <laughs> gathering ideas for the next book, but like yeah. in the meantime, publishing those ideas as its own book. Rather <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> tiny. It'll be. It'll be fine. Okay, well, that that seems good. I mean, if it's at least, like, decent, that seems like a nice note to end on. And we're going to be waiting Wisdom of Crowds in December, right? Uh, yeah, I guess that's right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sounds so excited. (laughs) I'm just like, I'm like, we have so much reading to do. (laughs) Bethany, you read, like, 30 books in a month. I know. This month, I barely managed to finish Soul of the Fire yesterday because I don't know if you know this, but there's been a trial going on. I do, yes. Well, I... I don't know how I read anything. So I'm like barely into Ship of Destiny and we have a live show Monday night for that. So I have to read that this weekend. But I'm busy all this weekend. I don't... And I still have books this week to read. It's rough. It's rough. Okay. Someone's saying the first Mother Confessor is a good prequel book for another time okay we'll see we'll see good to know um yeah i think i'll skip out on the like richard and kaylin stuff though because i have not heard anything someday in my life i might read them i'm not gonna say i have no interest in reading them but i'm not in a rush fair enough fair enough all right um well anything else about this i don't know that i have No, it's just come on, Terry. Why you got to make us read the eh, eh, books in between? Oh well, it's all right. Like, Hopefully, next book will be fun. Fallen. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to go in with lower expectations, even though I remember being my favorite. I'm like, okay, but you may not think that this time. It might it might suck. Be ready. You never <laughs> so that know. I don't like you know shoot myself <laughs> in the foot by expecting too much. Yeah, makes sense. Hopefully it'll be be better and fun. So uh, we'll be over on Leanna's channel next month. And Jessica. <laughs> oh my goodness. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it's a lot. Like, because it's a big commitment to even just doing like the full year of this. So like, I don't know that I'm going to want to like hop right on to more of this. Bethany is sick of me. <laughs> it's not you <laughs> it's just it feels like because oh god on... and i'm reading first law with her too oh, why did i agree to this 
<laughs> like they're good books. I think it's just the fact that it's like a year long commitment. And I'm like, why did I commit to like two year long readathons? You know what I or read alongs, you know what I mean? I'm like, it's just like it whereas at least like with like trilogies or whatever, you're like, okay, it's like three months. And then okay. Well, we'll I mean, with first law we built in some breaks. So we did, which I appreciate. I'm glad we did that. But there's also natural breaking points as opposed to sort of truth, which is kind of like it just keeps going. So if we were going to like get through it in a year, we kind of had to do it every month. So. And I mean, overall, like it hasn't been that bad. Like it's been fun, mostly other than this book. I'm probably mostly feeling like this because I didn't enjoy this one. But I'll be yeah. fine. I'll be when fine. we were in Stone of Tears, we were like, Gratch! Yes! yes! This is so fun! <laughs> yeah. And I mean, we're going to see Verna and Warren again. We're going to see lots of Nathan more. Like, mm-hmm. there's all, all the stuff we're like, where's that at? Yeah. Until the fire, like, it's in the next books. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get it. It'll be good. It'll be good. And I'm just... liking Jensen. So yeah. for a book that's like one of those that's like, where's Richard? Where's Kaylin? Um, for a book that's like that, I did like Jensen. Yes. I will say, am I again going to commit to two year long read read alongs in one year? Probably not. Like, I feel like it's a little excessive to do two of them in a year. (laughs) It is. But I'm excited because I'm finally going to actually catch up on all the first law books. Yeah. And then that's it. And then you can join me in the perennial re read a thon. Because you're, the withdrawals might kill you, so you just have to keep reading and reading and reading. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't... The Confessor... That's good to know. The Confessor trilogy or shorter books. Okay. We'll be... I mean, th- hopefully it'll be fun. Well, it'll, at the very least, like you said, like we're going to finally get to some books that we haven't read before. Yes. Which, like, even for the first law, you, I mean, for me, it's always, always, a, yeah. all of it's a reread. But for but me, like, it's, it's been fun to read stuff that I haven't read before. Yeah. So, yep. So. Tuesday on Chapter 3 Podcast, the episode is going up for, uh, Best of Gold. Best of Gold. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I'll help you out. <laughs> Thank you. I've, have I'm, you started I'm, the Heroes yet? No, because it is not June. <laughs> like, it's not due yet. <laughs> Right? I'm like, I still have books this month that are due that I haven't read. What are you talking about? Yep. At least First Law has like gold, solid gold standard audiobooks so that you can always have that yes. for all the months. Whereas like the this, good kind books mm, is like... Mm, mm-hmm. They're not great. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Jessica... I know, I know. I'm trying not to overcommit myself. So much. But in fairness, I mean, as 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 much as fantasy can get into having long series, there actually aren't that many that you could fill a whole year with. Like that is the exception. Yeah. Like there's a lot more trilogies or quartets or things like that. But an right. actual series that's twelve or more is an exception. Well, I mean, you could do like Realm of the Under- Elderlings books, or you could do Wheel of Time. Or but you again, could do- like. That you can name them like on using your fingers. Like it's mm-hmm. not majority fantasy. Is no, not you're right. Bad. That is accurate. Yep. Has anyone read the Law of Nines? Nope. I don't know what that is. Like even the Witcher books, there's not enough to fill a whole year. Mm-hmm. It's true. Are people in the pool? Is that? <laughs> there are people in the pool. Yes. <laughs> What joy is mine? So fun. Yeah. Uh, no, but have a lot of irons. Movie night yet. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. movie night. Oh, which actually we are doing. For well, she's not kidding. She's actually asking about movie night. Um, I mean, not for this, but we are doing summer movie nights with our patrons. As a crossover universes crossover. collide mm-hmm. it's, it's like fun. an avengers type situation <laughs> i've got a poll running there's like a couple days left and it's like i'm curious to see which which movie wins out between the two front runners <laughs> i have pitched this idea i have not <laughs> yet put up a poll <laughs> well get on that <laughs> we'll get there. 
Look, you know what? Today was closing arguments for the Depp Heard trial. So it's, it's fair. You I actually, you've had honestly, lot, after lot. like closing arguments and the bit of commentary I watched after, I was like, it's so weird. It's over. It's just, it's just over. Yeah. I have time now to like do stuff around the apartment, read books, see people, <laughs> film videos. There's like so many hours in my days now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah uh oh yeah Twerk wait also years. if you this is just very funny i don't know if you heard about this but during Dude. closing arguments today specifically while um amber's attorneys were presenting their closing arguments mm -hmm. um there was an amber alert that went off twice on people's phones in the courtroom an amber alert oh no <laughs> i was like you can't make this up <laughs> oh my gosh <sighs> wow yeah uh, Jessica Tamora Pierce. Yes, I do want to do more Tamora Pierce. Probably not like a year long thing, but I have, I have some ideas about that. So yes. I mean, you could obviously do Discworld for more than a year. You could. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't series you can do that with. It's still mm -hmm. the exception, though. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Um. Yes. Well. If anybody wants to see us uh, do a collab where we make each other watch movies out that we haven't seen before and comment on them live. And that join are outside our side of our regular viewing. Yes. Then join our Patreons. It's going to be a fun summer. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I think uh, currently the front runners for you are the proposal which is like the Sandra Bullock and uh, I'm aware what's his what face is. and Chronicles of Riddick. So it's oh going to be one of the two. <laughs> oh no. I'm not sure which I'm hoping for. <laughs> it's going to be great. I do like Deadpool. So. Hey, you can see him in a rom-com. See him in a rom-com. You know. And just spend the whole time wishing I was watching Deadpool. <laughs> Like, this would be so much better if your face was jacked up and you were in a red suit. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that should be, it should be fun. Look, it's a good movie. It's fun. Yeah. So we're, we're going to make each other watch things that the other person hasn't seen before that is outside of our typical and that they wheelhouse. Picky. There's a reason they haven't seen it before. Right. <laughs> So, uh, if you want to see us us do that to each other, <laughs> do that for each other, for surely. each other, to enrich each other's, expand each other's horizons. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. I think it'll be fun. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> As are you. I mean, honestly, either of those two movies, you should see. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a thing <laughs> I will I will Jessica come on <laughs> don't tell her that she might have to watch it I liked it I thought it was cute but I mean I haven't seen it you since also it was like in the Chronicles theaters. of Riddick I love the Chronicles of Riddick um yeah I like I it was my favorite movie for a long time that's <laughs> I just, you know, your willingness to say that on camera in public, I, I admire that on some level. <laughs> you know what? We are doing a read along for the Sword of Truth books. <laughs> hey, the Sword of Truth books don't have Vin Diesel in them. Maybe they'd be better if they did. <laughs> Can you imagine Vin Diesel playing Richard? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Gal Gadot playing oh uh, Kaylin. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Riddick is awesome. I 100% agree. Um, I liked the proposal when I came out too. I haven't seen it since then, but but it's so funny. Like, okay, I think even like the cringy stuff is just, it's funny. Wait, are we talking about Riddick or the proposal? Riddick. I don't know if she, well, okay. I don't know if she's talking about, I'm not sure if this is about Riddick or the proposal actually. Yes, I like Vin Diesel. I think Vin Diesel is entertaining, honestly. I'm actually, and honestly, I I don't know that I've actually ever seen a movie with Vin Diesel. 
I mean, unless we're counting Groot, because he is the voice of Groot. That's true. That doesn't count. But like, he he gets a bad rap, but I, he's actually like. I don't I'm know. just trying to like think that like, have I seen a movie with Vin Diesel? Man, I used to watch a bunch of his movies. I'm, I'm just gonna look up his filmography because, like, I I genuinely I don't know okay. if I have. Triple X. Nope. <laughs> I saw the trailers for it. It looked <laughs> bananas. It was. It was. It was great. <laughs> I think you've seen quite a few Vin Diesel movies. I may or may not have had a celebrity crush on Vin Diesel as a teenager. <laughs> I mean, so far, the only ones on this filmography that I've seen Oh, are no. Is there the racism galaxy. in the proposal? Oh, great. I look, Listen, I haven't seen it since it came out in theaters, so good to know. Thank you for the preparation. Get him in the rock confused. <laughs> I don't know who he, what voice he does, but I have seen the Iron Giant, and apparently he he's a voice in the Iron Giant. Mm-hmm. So I've only seen him when he's a voice actor. <laughs> Not an actual in the I, movie. I, I low-key hope Chronicles of Riddick wins because I think it would be a lot. Yeah, fun. other than him being the voice of Groot and the voice of someone in The Iron Giant, I legitimately have never seen a Vin Diesel movie. Wow. That's crazy. Like, it was not on purpose. Yeah. He just did a lot of crap. <laughs> I mean, like, he does a lot of, like, cheesy stuff, but he's, I don't know, I like him. I think he's funny. Um, he seems. I mean, when I've seen interviews and stuff with him, like he seems like a a nice guy. Like, yeah. you know, like I've no, I've nothing against him as a mm-hmm. human being, but I feel like I've, all the movies I was looking at that he's in, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember seeing an ad for that and thinking that looks ridiculous and not seeing it. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I think some of it's some of it's funny, but I guess we'll see. Currently, the proposal is in the lead, but you know, I would not be upset if. Uh, Redick pulls out in front. I, j- I honestly, I don't know which I'm hoping or dreading. I just, uh, yeah, I don't even know. I think Riddick would be really fun to do for like a watch party, but we'll see. Well, it'll be one of those and you say they both are fun. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I will, of course, like the proposal, I remember liking it, but I also haven't seen it in a long time. So we'll see. Fast and the Furious. Yeah, I haven't seen the Fast and the Furious movies, but I know he's in that. In those. I mean, I've been on the Fast and Furious attraction at Universal yeah. Studios. Yeah. Does that count? I've seen him in that. That does not count. Um, yeah, they do have good chemistry. I remember that. That's, yep. Yeah. Look, Jessica, I'm with you. <laughs> he's got a good voice. <laughs> I mean, it is it is deep, but it's deep in like a scratchy way. Yeah. Whereas, like, other deep, like, Idris Elba has a deep voice, but it's, like, a much more, like, rounded, like, full sound as opposed yeah. to this, like, scratchy, low, grinding sound. Growly. Grindy. It's not grinding. It's, like, I mean, it is, it is scratchy. Like, right? okay, this is weird because of it being me saying yeah. this, but I don't know if you remember how Kaz Brecker's voice is described in Six of Crows. That it sounds like stones grinding against each other. And like that's what Vin Diesel sounds like. <laughs> I don't know what I'm not wrong about, but I'm glad you think I'm not wrong. Yeah, I don't know. That was from earlier. It's so funny. <laughs> It's not the deepness oh, of it, though. It's the growliness of it. I mean, I I like it, but he could total. He would totally be a werewolf shifter. Oh yes, hundred percent. Oh my! Not in a good way. That's so funny. I get. You know what? We like what we like. That books and otherwise. It's so funny. I mean, he has a distinctive voice. He does. He has a very distinctive voice. Yep. All right. Well. <laughs> We have, like, yeah. thoroughly gotten off topic. But now I low-key <laughs> want to see, like, not a, if I would be really mad if it was, like, a legit high-budget version and it was cast this way, but, like, a parody mm-hmm. version of Sword of Truth and Vin Diesel. I would like to see that. That would be funny. Like, a, yeah, that would that would be entertaining. But, you know, actually, okay, legitimately? Legitimately. Oh, oh I forgot about that. Yeah. 
That's true. There are some moments that probably did not age well in this movie. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, but back to Vin Diesel being in the sort of truth. Okay. <laughs> he who could he could actually legitimately play Jagang. Yes. He could. He'd be a good Jagang. He's like kind of like now that I think about how I pictured yeah. Jagang, it's, it's kind of like an like even beefier, like an even beefier version of Vin Diesel. He was really beefy back in like the day. So yeah, I think. But even uh, so, like because Jagang is really extra, extra beefy in the description. So like but yeah, he could mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. like not parody, like actually play. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I had forgotten about some of that stuff. <laughs> well, Your head cannon just well. <laughs> we'll see. Well, it's like some of the side stuff that happens. It's not the like the main relationship is mostly like, but it's like like some of the family dynamics are like didn't age well. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> so who have we got? <clears throat> By the end of this year, we have everyone cast. So so yes. far we have Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth Richard for Richard. Richard. Yes. I still say Ava Green for Kaylin. I don't know if that has been rebutted. I, I don't know. I gotta think about like who I would cast for for Kaylin. I always forget who Ava Green is because she's Miss Peregrine in Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children and uh Huh. She's Serafina Pecola in the Golden Compass movie. She's a Vesper Lind in the Casino Royale movie. Uh, I mean, I'm not like I don't I don't have like strong feelings about who <laughs> who would play Kaylin. So I haven't seen most of those. <laughs> I was getting a, a lot of like crickets on those. I'm trying yeah, to think I don't. Would have seen. I, I, I thought really... maybe Miss Peregrine's Home would be the kind of thing because it's based on a YA book. Uh, like... Yeah, I read the book. I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> well, then. She's in a lot of Tim Burton movies. Okay, let me see if I've seen it. Oh, she was in 300. Oh, in the, second, in the second. Three oh, the second one. Okay. Oh. And yeah, she, oh, you don't watch Penny Dreadful either. She's in Penny Dreadful. Nope. Have I seen anything she's in? Let's find out. It's like, is this going to be like you and Vin, Vin Diesel? Diesel. <laughs> I mean, she's in a lot of speculative stuff, and you watch speculative stuff. Some. Yeah. It's funny, because I watch action movies, but I haven't seen any Vin Diesel movies. Wait, isn't that weird? But I, like, but I yes. don't... Um, she's got great screen presence, and she's a very... Um, she has, like, a deep voice that's like very ethereal and otherworldly sounding and she in general like i always thought that she should have been an elf in lord of the rings because she's got that like she looks like an elven fey creature vibe and she like has really long dark hair a lot of the time so yeah i definitely have not seen have you seen (laughs) oh yeah you haven't seen kingdom of heaven right no no i've not i have not seen uh, anything that she's been in so I have no commentary on this, but uh, like yeah. Ava Green's one of those actors that you can give them like MacGuffin jargon filled nonsense dialogue in like fantasy movies, and she mm-hmm. says it in a way that you're like, I'm taking all of this seriously. <laughs> That's cool. I'm I'm fine. I don't that that works. I'm not. She has to do that a lot in Penny Dreadful. Explains some kind of like nonsense magic. Um, and when you when she says it, you're like, I'm so serious about this right now. Like, I don't think this is funny. Like, <laughs> this is like the world is on the line. I believe you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, honestly, I would have preferred her to play Arwen, but whatever. No, I was not consulted. <laughs> yeah, she was. Okay. Great. Okay. 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 Um. Yeah. So uh, sure, I haven't seen her in anything, but sure. And, uh, but I, yeah, Chris, I actually, I don't know if you didn't see Miss Peregrine's Home because you didn't like the book, but, um, I saw Miss Peregrine's Home when it first came out and I had not read the book. And then last year I finally read the book, but it had been a really, really long time since I saw the movie. So then I rewatched the movie after reading the book and I was like, the movie is better. It's way better than the book. (laughs) Interesting. So, yeah, I don't know if that's why you didn't watch it because you didn't like the book, but if that is the case, I think the movie's better. Huh. The book was okay. I I liked the first one. I didn't like the other ones. I read like two of the other ones. I, don't I like haven't them. read any of the other ones. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah. 
I could also see Elizabeth Debicki playing Kaylin. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Did you see the Boz Lerman Great Gatsby? Yes. She plays Jordan. <laughs> huh. Okay. I mean, obviously Jordan is like a particular kind of character. Sure. She's got she's like six feet tall. She's like very statuesque and uh -huh. like has also has that like low sonorous kind of voice. Uh-huh. Sure. Um hmm. Hmm. sure. Yeah. I was when people were saying about casting for the show, I like I didn't like Richard and Kaylin nor dislike them. I was like, they're whatever, but I loved Tabard Bethel as Kara. She was perfect mm. as Kara. Uh, okay, what about Dark and Raw? Oh, I know. Do they, sh they should cast, um... Didn't we cast him, like, the f first or second book live show? I feel like we we landed on a solid one, but I don't remember. It wasn't that solid, because I don't remember who we decided on. I don't know. I, th I was thinking, like, um... Oh, yeah, um, Lee Pace. Didn't we say that? Uh, maybe you said that. Yes. Yes. With the, the elf wig. Mm hmm Yeah. I mean, yeah. it would be shorter, but like... But yeah, that's the, the look. Hair, yeah, yep. The look. Mm hmm Yep. I'm with you on that. So <laughs> I'm like, take I'm notes. Take notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone, we're saying it out loud. You guys remember yeah. Laura. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, now we have Vin Diesel for Jagang. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. Denna... I, I mean, I like maybe like Scarlett Johansson. I always picture them more as like quite tall and statuesque. I pictured them as like really curvy, but tall. Maybe, like because Scarlett Johansson is so short. I just like imagining Chris Hemsworth and Scarlett Johansson and her like dominating him. Like, I just. Like, all the times when, like, they have to, like, be, like, face-to-face, mouth-to-mouth, you know, like, uh -huh. when she's, like, talking to him. She'd have to be, like, on her... And he's, like, hanging from the ceiling. Like, she'd have to be, like, up on her do, like, tippy, tippy, tippy toes. I mean, they can do screen tricks like they did in Lord of I the guess. Rings for the Hobbits and make I it guess. work. Like, it wouldn't be awful. I just, like, no. that's not who I would picture. I feel like she's got, like, a vibe that would work for that. I mean, I think Florence Pugh, I think I meant, would be more... Actually, she'd be a good Kara, Florence Pugh. Hmm. Are you looking at Florence Pugh because you don't know who that is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're, like, hiding in a corner of shame. Like, I don't know. No, it's fine. I'm really bad at, like, knowing who people are. Unless Florence Pugh like... is in The New Little Women. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's probably, like, the main thing I've seen. <laughs> Yeah. I could totally see um, Elizabeth Olsen playing a Mord Sith. Thank you. I'm glad other people agree with me. Scar Doesn't she have big Mord Sith energy? Thank you, Jessica. This is how I feel. But what like about Elizabeth Olsen? Yes. Yes. She could totally play Mord Sith as well. She could play Denna. Because I feel like with Denna, you have to have that, like, you're terrified of her power, but then mm -hmm. also you can forgive and feel for her. To turn the sword yeah. right. And I think she could thread that needle. I think she could. I mean, her like her performance as the Scarlet Witch has been Exactly. I mean, that's what made me think this. <laughs> really good. Yeah. I think yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she could totally do it. She'd be good. She'd be good. Yeah. See, I feel like most of the people I know who they are either were really popular when I was younger or are in Marvel movies. <laughs> well, I'm glad I picked somebody that was in a Marvel movie for you. Otherwise, I'd be like, wait, who? Let me Google them. Florence is five foot three, Leanna. 
I know, but we were already on the subject of short actresses who could do this. And I said, maybe Florence Pugh. That's more what I would do. Because like Florence Pugh has like a, I don't know. She just feels very, I don't, th- I, this sounds negative and probably only because we've been raised in a misogynistic society, but like there's like a dominating quality to her mm-hmm. that like Scarlett can kind of bring that with like Black Widow. But Florence mm-hmm. Pugh, when she shows up, I just feel like, you know, mm-hmm. actually Florence Pugh was in the Black Widow movie. <laughs> She oh. played her sister. Oh, I think yeah. her sister. I haven't seen it. But. It's, yeah, her sister. Huh. Scarlett is also 5'3". Man, like, a lot of these actors are really short, honestly. Whereas, again, Elizabeth Debicki is like six foot tall. So. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I think they should, they should totally, like... <clears throat> Also, it would it would all, <clears throat> it would also be good to have like a more diverse array of uh, Mordsith if we're gonna have a bunch of them. Well, I mean, like Bernice and Reina, I pictured. I don't know if they're described that way or not, but I definitely pictured them darker. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking you could was like it Berdine, grab... not Bernice. It's Berdine, right? I thought it was. Uh, I don't know. Maybe well, her <laughs> and Reina. Yeah. I think it's Berdine. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm just thinking you could do like, uh, like Denai Greera could do a Mordsith. You she's name like, someone that I don't know. What? Okay, she's okay. she was in um, Kevin Diesel movie. No. <laughs> black panther <laughs> she's oh. like one of she's one of she's like the main guards woman person oh, yeah. and okay, she's also in like about. the walking dead and stuff yeah okay she could totally yeah, be a mordsith is... she'd be a good mordsith well since we're, you've made me think of black panther lupita nyong'o could also be a mordsith yeah okay well there you go who would you cast as zed I really liked the show Zed. Hmm. He can stay. But if not, if not. Because you have to have somebody that can be like dominating, but also kind of cuddly and quirky and funny. Mm -hmm. That's like a tricky. Because I feel like I can think of a lot of quirky actors and I can think of a lot of dominating, domineering actors. I can't think of a lot that can do both. (laughs) Yeah. Richard Harris is too like I don't know I don't think he could do quirky that well like you have to be kind of very silly as Zed at times. yes yeah Jessica yes Michonne was huge Mortz of energy thank you I agree Michelle Rodriguez Mortz okay we just need like a bunch of we get a bunch of Mortz that would be great um they should just let us cast things. I don't know why I'm never consulted on these things. Right? Zed is hard. Mandy Patinkin? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. I, hmm, I don't really see that, though. It's going to be like, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like, because I feel like it's got to be somebody like tall and skinny. Because he's described that way. Described I mean, honestly, the actor that they got him on the show was perfect. Yeah. he That is how I picture that. Yeah. I mean... I mean, maybe... Do you think Ian McKellen could do it? He's, like, more serious usually, but maybe he could do it. I mean, honestly, I think he could, but I also think that you could never cast him because he's already Gandalf. But, like, I actually do think that, like, now that you said that, he can do quirky and funny and bizarre. And he's mm-hmm. skinny and kind of tall. Like, I honestly think Ian McKellen could do it. But Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> what are you even doing? <laughs> you don't even have to call right. me. I've made my fan casts known. Just mm-hmm. approach those actors. If you couldn't get them because the actors refused, that's a different story. But the only way it's forgivable 
Oh, Christopher Walken. Oh, I, not I, could, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, I could see him doing a Zed character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Hmm. And I mean, again, he's Dumbledore, so like that for that reason shouldn't happen but michael gambin actually also can do quirky funny yeah you know he could also do it right who is christopher i don't know who this is okay hold on (laughs) he's already got the ahl in the name so he already belongs in this universe yeah christopher huh i mean he's kind of got that look Oh, I like that guy. Yeah, he could do it. He could totally do it. Hundred yeah. percent. I like that. Him, him. Because I've seen him in a lot of things. Actually, mm-hmm. I just don't recognize the name. He could definitely do weird and quirky. Hundred percent. Okay. So there. Remember that name for next time. <laughs> He's doing it. He's our Z. Christopher Lloyd is too quirky. <laughs> and too like iconically. Too um, iconic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like this because I also like yeah. that even though he's been Christopher Haredell has been in a lot of things. He's you know kind of a character actor, uh-huh. um, so he would like vaguely be recognizable to people, but like yeah. not doesn't have name recognition. You like you, people wouldn't go like, oh Christopher Haredell's in this. They'd just be like that guy. I think I've seen him in stuff where he's weird, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and you'd be right. Yeah, Nathan. He has to be a silver fox. Yeah. Actually, could you do Idris Elba for Nathan? And have Miral? I guess it's like a thousand years ago, right? Yeah. And have the like white hair. That would be quite impactful. Maybe. Uh I just don't know how good Idris Elba is at like Wiley. He's definitely good at like being enigmatic. But there's that kind of like tricksy right. that I don't know that I can see a Elba doing. That's true. He's more stoic, you know? Yeah. That's true. At least you Lori for Nathan. I kind of love it. I kind of love it. I think. Do you not know who, who Hugh Lori is? I, I probably do. I just. Oh my God. Yes, I definitely it. do know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. He'd be a good Nathan. Nathan. Yep. He, no. This was one where I was like, I'm pretty sure I know who that is, but I'm going to double check. <laughs> From house. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Google is my friend. Uh, yeah. No, he would be a good Nathan. Because mm-hmm. he has that like more devious kind of. And he also like has gotten more attractive as he's gotten older. Like he wasn't that good looking when he was young. Mm-hmm. So he definitely would have that like older man that still has like kind of sex appeal. Yeah. Which Nathan has to have. Yeah. Although, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that that's like as true more recently, like as opposed to like several years ago, but. I mean, he still has that kind of like charisma. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like. (laughs) He grew into it. Yeah. It's true. That's funny. (laughs) I mean, George Clooney, I feel the same way. Like, I don't think he'd be. I guess he could do Nathan, maybe. I don't really see that. Um, But he. I feel like he's too, like, totally suave. Like, he doesn't have enough of the, like. too, like, modern and American. Like, I can't see him in a fantasy. No. Like, he's definitely an older man with sex appeal. If this was, like, if we decided to do Sword of Truth as a modern-day setting, mm-hmm. like, an urban fantasy, then sure. But it's like um, that meme that's like, your face looks like it knows about technology. <laughs> you can't be in something historical. <laughs> you have a modern <laughs> face. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hmm. I mean, honestly, he's older now. Brad Pitt could play Nathan. Mm-hmm. He really could. 
because and he also does kind of quirky characters now that he's older he does like some he bizarre does. characters you could totally see brad pitt playing nathan yeah and still has sex appeal yeah that would work actually mm-hmm. actually now i want that very much <laughs> yeah <laughs> well good luck with your reading i know we're like going way longer than we're planning on the yeah, actor I to get going myself from- but i, I love fan casting yeah it's fun Who's the actor from Supernatural and Walking Dead? That is so vague. The uh, one that plays James, or not James, the one that plays uh, James Dean. No, his name is Dean. Uh, Dean and Sam's father. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm, I but like to play that. Nathan, he again feels too like American and modern. Hmm. Jeffrey, yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Um, I mean, I've decided it's Brad Pitt. Move on. <laughs> yeah, I I do think honestly Brad Pitt would be good. He'd be a good. Plus, player. also, if it was Brad Pitt and and Chris Hemsworth is going to be Richard Rawl or Richard, yeah, well, Richard they would Rall, look related. They would look like they're both Rawls. Yes. Yeah, I think that would work. That would work. So, out who do well. we need to call to make this happen? <laughs> <laughs> We have a great cast. We haven't contacted any of the parties, but we can guarantee this will be great. <laughs> yes. 100%. I love it. Well, who knows? Maybe uh, one day someone will ask us or not. But <laughs> You know, we can always hope that an executive is randomly a fan of these books and looks up some, you know, videos and is like, you make an excellent point. Mm-hmm. I will contact them forthwith. Brad hit it. I mean, Beth, He's, he is, though. I mean, like, like, I guess if she means that, like, he's not currently, like, rocking silver locks, then yes. But he's at an age where silver locks are appropriate. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, he's, like, 60, about to turn 60. So, yeah. He still looks good. He does. Well, he he doesn't look good in, like, a still young, but he looks good for his age. He looks good, yeah. He looks, yeah. Which is what Nathan should look like. He Mm -hmm. looks like he could be a thousand-year-old wizard that's still with the ladies. Yep. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, he was just in the the Lost City. Yeah. It was really funny, actually, speaking of quirky characters. He is funny. I like that he's doing more bizarre roles these days, because he's really funny. I don't know. His his face, it's not. it's not. Have you seen, um, Beth, have you seen the trailer for his new movie about the bullet train? It might be called the bullet train. Because they have some close-up shots of him in the trailer. And, like, he is looking He's every looking one his of age. his 60 years. He is. Yeah. I mean, they. I think for the, the Lost City, they put sunglasses on him most of the time. So I think that helps. And a lot of his more recent movies, like, they're more distant shots. But, like, mm-hmm. in the bullet train... It's very close up, very HD. You're like, yeah. Oh. Yep. He is, when he's not sober, he looks old. Yeah. No, he's definitely, I mean, he's like, he's like 60. But I think he looks good. He like, looks good. He's like, looks good. He's like, but he looks old. 60, but yeah. <laughs> he's catching up to George Clooney. Yep. All right, everyone. <laughs> on that note. This has been fun. On that note, we will be back. Uh, Next month on Leanne's channel. Let's talk about the next book. Or hopefully Faith of the Fallen. Hopefully. I have faith that it will not fall. That it will not fall. <laughs> um, so we will see you. See you there next week. Have a great night. Thanks for joining us.